are you do you think that Drake dropped what's next, the video and all that? Just in response, like, all right, it got leaked, fuck it. I'm just gonna put it out now. Yeah, kinda. Okay. Yeah, I kind of do because after we listened to it and we were talking about it, I, I don't think he's going to release leaked music. He's never been one that's had music already be heard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When he drops. Every time he drops, it's always been completely new. Right? 100%. To you, right? Like, have you been on Drake leaks before, like, this year? No. Nah. I don't think he really was... He wasn't really getting leaked like his, that. Yeah. <laughs> What up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Stereo Vision Podcast. What's up? How's everybody doing today? It's Sarski. We took a little minute break, a little hiatus, but we've been back. Y'all seen the reactions and stuff. I mean, we only took a hiatus because you didn't want to put out, you know. You know, we, you didn't want to put out last. We week's discussed episode. some things. We discussed some things. Spencer had some hot takes. So I responded. To I had some a better very, ones. very cold take. <laughs> I had a very cold, correct take. We'll talk. You about had it. a hot. You'll take. see the video at some point. You'll definitely see the video at some point. Oh my god! But y'all better fuck with Prince a lot. Has happened in music since two weeks, right? The two crazy keeps weeks going without us, man. Uh, but it's crazy. You think they'd stop? You honestly, think they'd wait? That's for us. What, bro, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. But we got some heavy hitters coming out, man. Mm -hmm. We hearing from some people again, you know. Drizzy, man. You know, we happy to hear about Drizzy, man. We getting blasts. It seems like people are waking up. You know, Anderson and Bruno. You seen the little Grammy <sighs> talk they was doing? Uh, yes, <laughs> that yes. was hilarious. Yes, hella funny. It was um because who had done that before them? There was someone that had done that like a couple years before. Them, the Grammy talk thing, like on Twitter, like the fake beef stuff, you know. Oh, uh, no, I don't remember who did that. I don't remember who did it. I vaguely remember that though. Yeah, that yeah. was funny for them, you know. Shout out Bruno and Park. That Man, that album's gonna be, gonna be so good. That album is gonna be insane. Like I, I don't even know after leave the door open. Yeah. Like I don't know how how it could be bad. I just think every track is going to at least sound like that, you know, which might be unreasonably yeah. high expectations, but also they're just two people that are so talented. And they seem like they get along together, which Definitely. is really cool too, because their vibes mix really well. You yeah, know? all the, the video and shit. All the promotional shit that they did with Silk Sonic has been fire so yeah, far. Seeing them kick man. it. They have a similar style too, kind of like 80s flair, you know, mm -hmm. a little retro action. Old souls, man, old souls. Definitely old souls. But, you know, you said it, you hit it on the head. The one that everyone want to talk about. The boy Drizzy, it got it got scary, bro. Scary quick. Oh my god, it got, man. It got scary quick. Hey, all right. So I gotta ask you. So uh -huh. we both know that that John leaked, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, are you? Do you think that Drake dropped what's next, the video and all that, just in response, like, all right, it got leaked. Fuck it. I'm just gonna put it out now. Yeah, kinda. Okay. Yeah, I kinda do because after we listened to it and we were talking about it, I I don't think he's gonna release leaked music. He's never been one that's had music already be heard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When he drops. Every time he drops, it's always been completely new. Right? 100%. To you, right? Like, have you been on Drake leaks before, like, this year? No. Nah. I don't think he really was... He wasn't really getting leaked like his, that. Yeah. So I feel like he is not trying to put this on Certified Lover Boy. Did Drake's camp leak it? Huh? Uh, that's, that is an interesting question. Did Drake's camp... Leak it to build hype right before he dropped it. I don't think so, just because there's too many leaks circulating but around. Too that okay, yeah, that's been people's response to that question. But bro, so you think he had a whole music video shot in the tuck for this song, and that he was just like planning on putting it on a project and just dropping it with the project? No, I don't think he had the music video shot. I think when he saw it got leaked, he shot the music video. You can't shoot a music video that fast. Yeah, you can. It got leaked on Wednesday, bro. No, we had heard it before then. Nah, it got leaked like that week. Really? Yeah. Oh. Mm. Like it was like it was like the first time I'd heard it was like Monday, Wednesday of that week, and then it was out with the music video on Friday. Then maybe this was all part of the plan. And it was like a big music video, like every all the models were in the Nocta stuff. Yeah. Like it was a bunch of different locations. Like it was no small thing. And like I see how someone could make the argument that that was oh he did this all kept in the tuck and was waiting to drop this maybe as the promotional single for the album. Mm -hmm. I would see that maybe, but I think I think he might have leaked this. Yeah, I think he might have leaked this one. I don't know, man, because he, I think it's almost like he knows that the leaked music is a thing for him now. Mm -hmm. It's like Drake can't ignore that, can't deny it. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? So almost lean into it. It's like all right, people are already leaking my stuff. Let me maybe throw this one out there to him. Get the hype up for the week. People talking about my leaks again. Then let me drop a music video and Scary Hours and mm -hmm. get everything. 
Yeah, and then also give myself time to combat all these other leaks and go back at the project. You know, rethink the project. Man. So do you want to hear the leaks on a project? I don't know because I haven't been listening to the leaks. So I don't know how fire they are. I've heard a couple, and those I would definitely, I definitely want to hear. What's it called? 1942? Uh, need me. A lot of 42, man. A lot of 42 on these flights I'm taking. I definitely uh, want to hear that. I definitely want to hear that on the project. I mean, it's de- if y'all aren't listening to leaks, y'all are better people than I am for sure. I'm not listening to leaked albums, right? Because there's been albums. Like, yeah. the whole album has been out. You know? Yeah, like, there's you didn't, been, yeah. There's multiple versions of the album that have been fully leaked to completion. People are talking about, like, 5 a.m. in London, freestyle. Like, there's a bunch of songs, bro. Like, there's a bunch. 5 a.m. in London? I want to hear songs, that like, so bad. Some, that also could have been, like, the totally wrong. Because it was, uh, the song's really called Lucky Lefty, bro. Because you know I'll be watching videos talking about the leaks just because I can't hit a leaks, bro. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, like, I'm of the stance where it's, like, I've heard some of the songs, right? Mm. Everything that I've heard leaked from Certified Lover Boy, I'm going to just let y'all know now, it's some of Drake's best work to me. I think it's fire, right? Mm-hmm. So, I think that you don't sacrifice the quality of your project just because of some fuck shit that went on. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You drop your shit, and if you have some other things you want to get off your chest, drop another album. Mm-hmm. Drop a mixtape. Like, that's just more great music for people, but if you, if you know it's already out there, it's like you're not going to take it away from people. You just want those songs to never exist just because they got leaked. I mean, but he could make a better album. You know, there, there is always that chance. Could be Carter 3. You know, we brought it up when we did the reaction. Could be a Carter Three scenario where he reworks it and it's all better and it's a classic, you know. That's tough to do. Definitely, but do you know how hard that is to like. It takes I, a goat to do it. It takes a goat to do it. Hey, I mean, he could. He's up to the challenge. He's up to the challenge. And I wouldn't be a if he if that was the energy he came with. While I wouldn't necessarily like agree with it, like lean into it, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, and he's just uh, such a prolific hit maker that if he's in this bag where you really think this whole project is pretty flushed out, then I think there's a great chance he could turn around and do 20 more. You know, if he's really in that headspace, because he's done it before, you know? I mean, all right, all right. We don't, I don't want to spend too long on Drake, but I will get in the Drake bag for a minute. Because <laughs> what he's doing is so unprecedented, mm-hmm. and it's so crazy, because I always think back to when I think of interesting ways that albums are released, or things going differently with promotional stuff. I think of Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Her self title drop with no promotion, no nothing, just said, Here's my album. I'm Beyonce. You will like this. And everyone did. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's not many people that can do that. And you hit the nail on the head by saying it takes a goat to do it. Mm-hmm. And Drake, with the way that he works and the way that he moves, it's just so calculated and purposeful. Like, to the haircut. You know, you see the heart. Like, yep. he rebranded himself. Yeah. His image got a whole line of clothes for the thing. Like, so I feel like he's not. While he is of the caliber of artist that could do it, I just feel like that's never been the way he moved. I feel like Drake has always just been in such control of everything that I feel like this is not... Yeah. This kind of random stuff isn't going to work for him. Yeah. No, and, like, even though Drake is a prolific hit maker, like, the example we're comparing him to is probably the most prolific rapper of all time. You know, nobody has... Nobody can make as much good music as Wayne. You know, nobody. Yeah, nobody. Like Wayne is- so it's probably not a fair comparison... And I think you're right about historically, it, everything in history leads to Drake not scrapping the album. And I'm fine with that. Honestly, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. If you're saying it's, it's heat, I know it's going to be heat. Keep the album. I don't, I don't, need, I don't need him to scrap it. Need that. And I don't bro. think people are listening to the leaks to the point where it's going to ruin it. You know? Yeah. Like, we talk about the leaks. I talk about it with a couple other people, but it's not like everyone I know that fucks with Drake is hitting me up with these leaks. You That's know? a fact. Oh, I, I can. There was a minute. There was a minute in, I want to say December, January, mm-hmm. where it was hot. It was hot out here. <laughs> like if you was on Twitter, you was going here at Drake League. Mm-hmm. Like at like if you were in like certain like groups of people, like between December and January, you you've heard at least three leaks. Yeah, someone's played them. Someone sent them to you because it's there are tracks floating. Yeah. I cannot lie to you. There are there are no, several yeah. tracks floating around, man. But we'll get into him a little bit later. I want to talk about some more stuff that came out. Cause yeah, your boy dropped again. 
Blast? Yes, sir, Ski. Blast! You don't know how to make a bad song still, I ain't man. heard one bad Blast song. Never. We got to quote it every time because it just gets more and more true, bro. More man. and more true, bro. And, and the features. Yeah. This was a new look for Blast. Unlocking some things, man. Yeah. Evolving. New levels to this shit, bro. Because Blast, when he starts this collaboration thing, that's when people really going to realize how good he is. Mm-hmm. Because this sound that he's created, this vibe that he's creative is infectious and everyone loves it. Mm-hmm. I don't see how people can't. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I agree. And I, I've just been listening to those two songs, literally nothing else, since we did the reaction video. And one thing I will say since we reacted is the song with Russ is good. It's good. It's really cool. I like it. The song with Draco is amazing. I think it's that much better and like one of his best songs. Like, that song is crazy. The melody that he hits on the hook. Bro, the messaging yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Because I really want to, I think, Blast is so fun to me because he is reestablishing what it means to be a musician. Mm -hmm. It's not about the press. I don't care what you do in the public. You know what I mean? Keep your private life yourself. Mm -hmm. If I want to learn about you, how I'm going to learn about you, I got to listen to your music mm -hmm. and listen to what you say. Exactly. Because while I can't go on the internet and find a ton of information about Blast, I can go listen to all of his music and say, oh, this is what this man's about. That's the kind of guy you are. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, that was kind of uh, where the more I listened to it, I had a slight disconnect with fuckboys. Yeah, yeah. You know, was the messaging because it because he's a player. He's he's real. You know, that's something that I've seen in his music, you know, in the last year of his music coming out. And this, the, just the message on that hook, I was like, eh. But I like the message a little bit because, I, I mean, I, so I, I agree to it 100%. Like, they, well, I agree to it, but I don't think Blast is talking about himself. And he's singing like he is. You say fuckboys fuck it up for real niggas. Yeah, and he's he if, he if he's put in one of those two categories, it's not fuckboys. Exactly. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. I guess yeah. I might have been misinterpreting. Yeah, that's the, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I think he's like, you've been fuck with these lames, bro. You can't mess with these lames. Like, you have this... You have this preconceived notion about men because you've dealt with so many fuckboys. Fuckboys are the ones that are fucking it up for real niggas. Like, real niggas are out here trying to really be genuine and yeah. really, like, rock with you in a real way. Yeah. But you've just been through so much bullshit that you don't know how to recognize that. Yeah, I think I've been misinterpreting the message a little bit in the last two days. Because I, I think the message is cool. I mean, it just don't sound as good. Yeah. Man, Draco, Spencer, Spencer Ben, I'm going to give him credit. Thank you. Because he's been talking about him. He, since like freshman year of college, we've been going on like what, year three now? Yeah. Uh, being a Draco fan, man. Yeah. The man can spit, bro. The man can spit and he's different. He's different. He's different. He has his own language. He literally has his own language. And that's why, like, the more Draco you listen to, the more you're like, oh, yeah. Because you start to hear repeating things and you start to understand. The more context you get, you're like, oh, that's what he meant when he said. Miss Lin Lin just took me shopping. You know what I'm saying? He just robbed a Chinese woman's house. You know, oh that's what he said. God, you know? Bro. That's what he meant when he riding with a Glock Pippi long stocking. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you learn. And it's so fun. It's so fun to uncover the dialect and the bro, language. And he has a crazy flow. Like nothing else. A crazy like flow, man. Like nothing else. Like nothing else. Get tapped in, man. Drake, Drake the ruler. And Drake knows. That's what I'm saying. Uh, we'll get back. I guess just Drake podcast, bro. Because this man really... <laughs> Make him an A&R, bro. He knows. He has an ear to the streets, bro. Yeah. I feel like if Drake rocks with you, probably a good chance you got something. Definitely. You got something there. I would have never, I never expected their collab to happen. Yeah. Never, ever. At all, bro. At all. I'm trying to think of what else I'm really trying to, like, talk with that been come out this week. Um, Brent Fires was cool. Mm-hmm. Mm. Give me on was dope. Give me on was cool. A little repackage thing. He basically did the deluxe album trend. You know, try to get them stream numbers up, or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's cool. Like good, good attempt. You know what I mean? Like putting the last song at the very end as a cliffhanger. Like, we talked about it in the little video. Like I, I messed with that. You know, the positioning. If you're gonna do the stuff that is so obviously and not so obviously for streams, but is for streams. You know, and is for your numbers, which is fine. As an upcoming artist, I'm not gonna fault you for that. You mm -hmm. know. Do it in a creative way. So I appreciate when people don't just throw the tracks at the end, you know, and say bonus tracks. Like, eh, make it feel purposeful. Mm -hmm. You know, like the whole rebranding, the way that they repackaged the um, the cover photo mm -hmm. and made it seem more glamorous. Like, he's matured throughout it. Like, this is a third iteration of the project. And then the last song's living. Like, those things make me feel less sick about it, you know? Mm -hmm. 
I don't mind because it, it seems uh, like preconceived yeah. to me. You know, just the message on the the, the two EPs. It seems like this it. was this was the plan the whole time. It wasn't just like, oh, we made a hit. Let's get some more money. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like this was probably the the planned course of action. I agree one thousand percent. Um, those are those are the real heavy hitters I want to talk about. You been slapping anything else, bro? No, just just really. Well, I'm I've, I've been in a huge Pharrell phase the last like two weeks. Like me about greatest producer of all time. Yeah, I would have said that before my Pharrell phase though. It's tough. I mean, I could never pick. Who, who else? Yeah. Ma- who? Yay? Oh. I mean, oh. it's Yay and Pharrell for me. Yeah. Personally. No, that's fair. That's fair. And it's it's just I'm never gonna be able to pick. Just just the Neptunes and the the projects that they executively produced, like the eight projects, like that's all I've been listening to, and it's so. Fucking good. I know that that little Brent got you excited about it. So excited. Tell me, Brent, because you know. So man, excited. I'll let you let, explain to the people what Brent got cooking, bro. I don't know what he's got cooking, but he's collabing with the Neptunes, that, oh. which is just a recipe for a classic. But people don't get that, though. Mm-hmm. And people really don't understand the difference between Pharrell and the Neptunes, too. Yeah. That's because that's a very specific distinction. To have matters. a Neptunes track is. Special mm-hmm. is special. They only did did eight albums. They only worked with three three groups, right? Nerd, Clips, and uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Missy, right? No, 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 no. no, no. no. Uh, oh my God, hold on. Oh, it's it's Kellis, 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 Kellis. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, because bro, 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 first of all, their prime is Clips. That's to me. Yeah. I think the yeah. next two, what they did on Hell Hath No Fury has never been the chemistry. It, that it, chemistry was so, it's energy. Just what they did on those first two albums, specifically Hell Hath No Fury, influenced, you know, a whole generation of producers. And uh, you can hear it so palpably. So imagine, and then shout out Pusha and No Malice, bro. Because mm-hmm. how you get the grinding beat and understand how you're going to rap over that. If you hear the grinding beat before it's finished, how are you rapping over that? How are you hearing that and saying, yep, I want to spit a verse over this? You got to be really special. Bro. You got to be really special. And they were really special. That's, oh, the God. fact that Hell Hath No Fury is probably, in my opinion, the best cocaine rap album of all time, if not top three, top four. But yet it's not even about coke. The whole album is literally about all these other, you know, like results of being in the dope game, but they're not really besides like keys open doors. They're not like really talking about like coke, you know? It's crazy. They're just talking about the shine, the struggle, the emotion, you know, like what comes with the game. What bro. comes ah. the game, bro? And that's that's what the energy that I want in rap again, man. Mhm. And I think that it's something that we're going to touch on when we get to like the Biggie doc that came out cuz mm-hmm. you see a lot of that with him. Hustlers turn rappers is no no joke, you know? Mm-hmm. The parallel between those two lives and then how that translate into your music is something that was uh, that was a theme. That was a thing that was you probably made that transition or you knew some people that made that transition if you were coming up in the 90s early 2000s of spitting. Mm-hmm. And like it don't matter what you were selling but you was in the game, you was moving something, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that mentality is so like prevalent in hip hop music. Because that hustler mindset is what makes stars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know you got to move your product. Mm-hmm. You got to sell your product. Like, move, make people mess with you. Make people need your product. Make people want to keep coming back for more. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and it provides the grit that people love in hip-hop. Shoot. A little man. bit of credibility. A little bit of, shoot, you know, man. real life shit. A little, little tough shit. Hey. Do we get into it now? I mean... We can, we can. I want. I, I do want to. So, do you want to touch on quarter one for a second? Yeah, let's touch on quarter one because I've been getting. Uh, you know, I, obviously, I'm just criticizing new music because I love to do that, mm-hmm. that's my favorite activity. But I just basically have heard a lot of people talking about the disappointment that they've had in the start to this year mm-hmm. in terms of releases, in terms of just like the amount of new music they're getting from a lot of people that were quiet in 2020 that mm-hmm. they felt were guaranteeing albums in 2021. You know? Yeah. I mean, the first thing I would say, though, is just, like, it's January, March. It's January, February, March. Mm-hmm. Like, every year, quarter one is weak. Yeah. Weak. You know, that is a common theme. You know, shit heats up as the year goes. Like, this is the months where nothing drops. You know, we yeah. get we get the couple little, like, Lucy's, the smaller artists drop. But if anyone thought Kendrick was going to drop in, in quarter one, if anyone thought Drake was going to drop in quarter one at a project, you know, I would say, I think you're foolish. You know, I don't think anyone that's that's top of the game is ever dropping in quarter one. I mean, into that, I would say though, 
I agree with you, probably. Mm -hmm. Drake was supposed to drop, and he didn't. He was supposed now, to. Now, so then people are saying, huh? That the game is waiting on Drake. Okay. People are waiting on Drake to drop because they know that what he's going to put out mm -hmm. is going to be hot, going to be crazy, mm -hmm. it's going to be what people talk about, and it's going to be on the captions. It will be a moment for at least two weeks. Mm -hmm. At least two weeks. So they're saying let that moment live. Let him breathe. Yep. Let that breathe and then attack. Yep. Because there's just no point. There's no point. You're going to get overshadowed at least a little bit. Like, you know, like he's taking attention away from it. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. But I don't think that's re realistic. I don't think people should... Because I'm looking at just his discography now. He's never dropped before April. You know, he's ne even even his first shit, he's never, ever dropped... Oh, Rise of an Empire. Oh, that's a Young Money album. Yeah, he's never dropped before April. So I think if anyone's really... I, I think people should take this this moment and say, okay, I have a month where I know that people aren't going to be playing Drake because it's not going to be out, you know? But no one knows now when Drake's coming out. Yeah. Nobody knows, so it's a waiting. Because if you mess up and drop on the weekend that Jake drops, you're fucked. And I don't think people want that. I don't think people want. I don't. I don't think that that's the sole reason why quarter one didn't have a lot of heavy hitters. I think a lot of people are just laying back and yeah. like creating, you know. And like Bruno and like Anderson's a heavy hitter that's mm -hmm. coming out, so you know. But I do think it plays a part. I think no, everyone. I part. think everyone is waiting to see what he's gonna do. Everyone has to have it on their mind because, like you said, that's a suicide mission dropping the same. Yeah, week like as Drake. it just doesn't make sense. Like the only one who's gonna do it probably is like Rashad, and that's just album of the year. So, you know, like, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> that was a promising uh, Instagram post when he said they got the album. Hey man, yeah. my Rashad fans, it's on the way, guys. It's album on the of the year is on the way. It's on the way. So, it's not the album of the year, but it's on the way. So, yeah. I mean, uh, that's the only thing I really want to say on that quarter one stuff. Because I think, while that's an interesting rumor, you know, mm -hmm. we got a lot of hot shit to come out this year. I think it's just a classic quarter one, honestly. Yeah, a lot's coming out. A lot's going to come out. But what did come out in quarter one was the Biggie Doc. Was the Biggie Doc. I got a story to tell. That's Netflix cool. Doc. If you haven't seen it, it's definitely the best Biggie themed anything i've seen you know and i've seen a couple different docs couple different docu-series none of them have hit like this one for me yeah this one was this one was really cool i like how they had like the the elements that, that made it unique was like they had the lyrics and stuff and everything mm -hmm. when like he would be spitting some crazy stuff like you really knew what he was talking about they definitely had the most rare footage with what was his bro's name they got interviewed a lot and was carrying the camera around Oh my God, bro! Uh, Big bro, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm mad. I'm not even gonna try to. Try but to definitely junior mafia, bro. Definitely more rare footage than I had ever seen before. You know, unseen clips, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, and that was cool. It was. It was definitely like just interesting to like see Biggie because we didn't grow up in that time, mm -hmm. so feeling the energy of his come up. I feel. Um, I just feel like seeing the magnitude of like what Biggie did. And how people seem to know about him way before Ready to Die came out. Like he was kind of like yes. a street. Because he only has, like the doc takes place a lot of it before Ready to Die and then immediately after. Most of it. And Most it, of it before. Yeah, and it doesn't really go into everything like after that. So he was just getting well known kind of off word of mouth. People knew this big dude that was spitting, but he was really a hustler. That's how a lot of people mm -hmm. knew him. Like he was, the fact that he was selling crack, bro. Mm hmm and there was a point in time when he said, yo, like to Puff straight up, if this music don't work, like I'm going to go back to hustling. Like no question, just to feed my family. Like this rap stuff was not like that for him, you know? Like there was a point in time when it wasn't just a means to celebrity like all these people feel, you know? Mm -hmm. It was a way to feed your family. It was. But he also saw the vision. Because you remember when he was in North Carolina? Because he was selling crack down there for like $20 versus 5 in New York. And Puff found out, you know, he got snitched on. Someone told Puff. I think it was the same brother that was holding the camera that I can't remember his name, D something. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and Puff is like, all right, bro, like, we're going this way. And Biggie's like, I'm with you. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm going where you're going. We're making this music shit. So I think he did see the vision. But, yeah, I mean, shit, he was in North Carolina. Yeah. Like, so obviously it was important to him. Obviously, you know, he needed to do it. And, bro, like, you hear it in his music. Oh, yeah. Like, the, con like, I love I've loved Ready to Die, right? Yeah. Like, I've really enjoyed that album for a while. You know, I respect the Biggie. Like, I, I like Biggie coming up, right? But I don't think I understood his mentality. Mm-hmm. 
I don't think I knew fully what ready to die meant for him. Because, mm-hmm. you know, obviously music is subjective. You make it mean something to yourself. But when you have a clear picture of what the person going through it was trying to articulate through their art, it may hit harder for you because you may be going through a similar thing. You know, you may have a similar way of thinking. Yeah. And he's like, he was down to die for whatever, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, for whatever. Like, fuck my mom, fuck my girl. Like, I'm ready. Like, I, because I want this. Because, like, I know. That, like, I'm about to die about this shit, whatever it may be. That's the thing for me. Like, mm-hmm. it's not, he's not saying music. Just, I'm ready to die for this brand, for this, like, to come up. Yeah. Like. And also, I think it was just, like, a sadness that I hadn't experienced before. Because I think I had always taken it, like, like, like you were kind of saying, like, I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to do whatever it takes. If I, if the game takes me, it takes me. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know, kind of the energy I got. I remember there was a quote when he was, like. I'm not on. I'm not on no killing myself. Shit, we're ready to die. It just means, you know, life would probably be a lot better off if I was dead. No stress. You know what I'm saying? And I'd be laid up. That just kind of tells me how troubled he really was. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's more than just desire. That that's him being troubled. You know, and he says it's not on no killing yourself. Shit, but it it, it it's suicidal thoughts. You okay, know? but now my counter to that would be this. That is unapologetic, Mm -hmm. unfiltered realness that people aren't getting. Mm -mm. Because that's, bro, life is hard. Life Mm -hmm. is full of stresses, and you gonna feel like, damn, there's some days I just wish I had no worries. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the only time worries go away is in death. Yeah. And it's not, that's why it was such a big risk. That's why I love this song called Fuck Me on there. That's why I love like that. He's like saying so much why, like suicidal thoughts is a crazy song to come out in the 90s. It's my favorite That's song on the album. That's a crazy song to come out in That's the 90s, That's a crazy song bro. to ever come out. That song still is shocking. In the age of overstimulation of media, that is still shocking. But it's real. It's amazing. That's so real because it's not, I don't think it's like, I don't think Biggie personal. I, I don't know what's going on in his head. I don't know him personally, but I don't think I really don't think he was a suicidal guy. Mm-hmm. I oh, just me think he recognized how crazy life was and that it wasn't gonna get any less crazy. It was just gonna keep going. Life's gonna either keep going with you or without you. Mm-hmm. So you may be ready to die because you don't want to deal with the stress, but you're not going to die. You know, he had a very existential point of view that was almost nihilist because of I think. His early life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was very, uh, it, it was it was it was peaceful. You know, because I think a lot of existentialism often gets this rep for being, you know, uh like really negative and just people that don't care, you know, don't care about anything. But I think he found peace in that. Yeah. You know? Because he said, I'll go, you know, when I go, it's gonna be better, you know. And it was haunting to me a little bit too. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why like if you watch this documentary, I I don't know if y'all feel this way, but like I had to go read. Like more about like I had to go watch mm-hmm. more big videos. Like I found a two hour doc on YouTube that I watched immediately. I, like I had to go see more because it's weird to say, but like it's like it almost had to happen. It seems mm-hmm. inevitable because Biggie's whole persona, everything about him from the fact that he was this little kid, like obviously like he was a big little kid, but like <laughs> this little kid was spitting, there's videos of him walking up and down the steps, spitting crazy ball, like he's really spitting, bro. Yes. Like really, sp- like and it's natural, it's so easy for him. And yeah. then he's this character, he's larger than life. Mm-hmm. I think larger than life is the only way to describe him. And if you're larger than life, you know, like, I don't know, it's like he had to have that storybook fable ending, like, you know, like. Yeah. I don't know. It was. It's just crazy. The vibes surrounding him, and then bringing Pac into the fold, bro. Unfortunately, Spencer's not wearing his Pac T-shirt that he wanted to before the pod. But you know, I didn't want to. <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about it. Hey, <laughs> West Side, <laughs> Thug no. Life. Hey, it's Thug Life. <laughs> hey, that you think that East Coast West Coast stuff would ever come back? No, no. I think people. I uh, at least not in hip hop music. I think hip hop suffered enough in in 1996, 1997. And I think that will always be remembered. I think they're immortal, and their stories will be told, and I don't think people will let it get that bad. I mean, the East Coast got shit on. Yeah? Like, in like in, like in music, right? Yeah. It was so interesting to see, uh, there's N.W.A., Snoop, Pog, Dre, yeah. and their Ice Cube, bro. Yeah. Easy E for a little bit when he was doing his solo stuff. Mm-hmm. Like... Nate Dog, bro. Like, that's not even like Mac Dre. Like, we didn't even talk about the Bay. We bro. didn't even talk about the Bay. Like, the yeah. Bay is like, bro, like, there was this energy around the West Coast. And we say the East Coast, but it was really New York only. Yeah. 
and they can't do everything by themselves. And Hove wasn't even out yet, so Biggie really tried to just shoulder the load for the whole East because they wasn't paying. Because at the Source Awards, bro, when when was Andre 3000 Source Awards? That was like early 2000s, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was when they said we putting the South on the map, bro. Yeah, that's when the so, South was. So it's really only just New York on the East Coast of this stuff, mm -hmm, bro. Mm -hmm. And Biggie was the king of New York, but that's not enough to compete with the entire West Coast. Okay, feel, but right? it's not like it's much more than L.A. Take Mac Dre out the equation, and then it's just L.A. But the Bay was, but the Bay was a thing. The Bay influenced okay, yeah, a like, lot of sound, like a lot of sound, bro. Agreed, agreed. But who is like, who are you putting throwing a battle besides Mac Dre out of All the right. Bay in the nineties? But there was, I mean, I'm not from there, so I don't know. I just know the influence. I just heard that there's, I, I just know that people shout them out a lot. You know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. And like, I just feel like there's not that many, there wasn't that many heads out of New York. Yeah, it wasn't that. I many. think, yeah. I mean, I don't think it was that lopsided, because I mean, New York had, like you said, Tribe. New York had uh, Biggie, Nas. You know. But were they? They weren't. Ooh, ooh, huh. ooh, 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 Okay, here's why I felt lopsided to me. I think that New York wasn't making gangster rap. Yeah, it's a different genre, bro. And I think a lot of L.A. people, like, what, even if it wasn't necessarily gangster rap, it was from a gangster background, mm -hmm. you know? So then when they get up on stage, when they talk and they shit, you know, when they get in the beef, then, you know, I feel like it could get a little more hostile. Mm-hmm. Then a tribe called Quest ain't beefing like this. They're not. No, no, never. <laughs> you yeah, know, the Fujis aren't beefing like this. No, no. They want. And Biggie was an R and B guy. I know it's crazy that he could sing like that. I didn't know before the doc. Bro, I mean, it was just. It's obviously an unfortunate situation that we've seen in the past. But another thing about that West East is what Biggie said in the doc is like, okay, all those guys out there, they got movies. You know, it's, it's Hollywood. It's L.A. They got Boys in the Hood to give an image. For this gangster rap that they're making, you know, but there still isn't, at least in my head, like a super clear picture of New York in the 90s. You know, I think I have an idea. I've seen shit, but nothing as vivid as, as like, gang banging in Los Angeles in the 90s. You know, I can see that picturesque neighborhood by neighborhood. You know what I mean? I mean, you want me to hit you with a crazy one. Yeah. Juice with Pac, okay, which is yeah, so yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is so crazy because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Pac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's how they became friends. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, uh, I don't know. That's, that's how they became friends? Yes, bro. Biggie and Pac? Pac was out in New York shooting Juice, bro. Oh, I didn't know that's when they met. And that's when they had linked up because remember the video of them like when they do the freestyle yeah, we yeah, all yeah. seen a thousand times with Biggie at that ugly ass fucking fat bandana <laughs> over covering his whole face, bro. Take that shit off. Man. Yeah. Ah, oh, and the energy in that video is crazy. But buddy. don't you think at, like like SoCal was so just immortalized in music and movies in the '90s that it creates an easier narrative to like. To Ready like, to Die was the movie. Yeah. Ready to Die was the movie for the East Coast, but yes, I agree. You know what I'm saying, though. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I, I and think I think so. that's why sometimes it feels le le lopsided. Yeah. You know, because I mean, those guys that we mentioned, they're making dope shit, but like, like. Snoop, like, what besides doggy style was really hot until Bush came out. <laughs> you know? You knew I was about to say. I know Bush you were. I know you fine, were. Dude. That's been my shit recently. And, like, after the NWA split up, you know, we got a, we got America's Most from Ice Cube. We got a couple good projects. Dre went and Chronic. did his thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chronic and all everything that Dre did. But, like, I don't know. I think it was closer. Kind. I mean, if Biggie stays alive for Hove coming up, Nas going crazy... Lauren doing her own thing. Yeah, then there's some comp. Yeah. But I think that, you know, and for the better. For the better it ended. And, yeah. you know, there wasn't no more shit talking. And that's not the big... I don't think that should be the biggest take... Wow. We fell into this, but I want to actually hit on this. I think that too often when talking about the legacy of Biggie, mm -hmm. it's so much of it is the East Coast, West Coast beef. Yeah, and, and we I did just fall into this, it. And I think that this really emphasized that there was so much more to him mm -hmm. like his jamaican roots yes well, about that, i did bro. not know i don't think that has nearly been like like highlighted enough and nobody knows family, that family came bro. out yeah family was really big for him bro oh man but that shit with his mom was hard to watch it was hard to learn more about their relationship for me why because it seemed so broken how it just seemed like it seemed like they were on complete different pages, living different lives. She didn't listen to his music ever until after he died. What's she listened wrong to it with once. that, huh? I think because it was, I would have felt that if it wasn't undeniable 
like undeniable just love and like because when when i hear his mom talking about i don't listen to his music i hear my own mother saying i don't care how big you get you're not what the people call yeah, you. You're, you're so not, Christopher. You are, you are my son. Yeah. You're this child that I know. Whenever I look at you, I see that seven-year-old. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think she loved him. She supported She just didn't know. Like The wildest thing for me was when she threw the, the crack that was drying out in his room away because she thought it was old mashed potatoes. <laughs> like, that's wild, bro. But that's what they, it, was, it was beautiful because he knew how naive she was. He knew that she didn't know. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'm going to make this money so you don't have to worry about me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make my own money. I'm gonna look out for myself. I'm gonna do this, but I love you. I just don't want you to get involved with this. And I think that's fair, you know? I do too. I think that's young maturity. Did you not feel a, a something from when she was getting interviewed that wasn't just straight love? You didn't get any kind of realness. It was because really, she said she was, she said when I found out, when I, she heard the stories about him after, she said I was mad at a person in death. Yeah. And that could be mad. That's a mom. I don't, I just got major mom vibes. Yeah. Because a mom knows you better than anyone else in the sense that like they're not gonna sugarcoat shit with you. They're gonna love you unconditionally, but they're also gonna tell you when you're a fuck up. When you're dumb, yeah, and you don't want to, you may love your mom, you may tell your mom everything, but who's the person you want to piss your mom, piss, piss off the least in this world? My mom gonna get, my mom gonna take my head off. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then I don't know. Then she said the shit about she didn't even cry when he died until she listened to his music. She, she there had were no, no more tears. tears. There were no yeah. tears. It's real. It's, I it's just real. love the realness. I, it's I think, real because that's I think I think that Biggie's story is just the epitome of life. Mm -hmm. You know. And you have to appreciate every second of what you're doing in the journey. And even though Biggie's life was short, I think that he appreciated moments. Mm -hmm. And I think that that came through in everything. Because when you look at how he was asked things and the way he talked about things, it was very thought out answers. You know what I mean? Like, he would, he would pause before he spoke a lot, you know, I feel mm -hmm. like. Like, and he wouldn't, and then when he would talk, right, I would almost be expecting him to be guarded. But he would just continue mm -hmm. and like expand mm -hmm. upon everything he said. You know, like yeah. he was a thoughtful, thoughtful guy. Very thoughtful. And I think that he, that that comes from somewhere. Yeah. And that comes from people who you know, parents weren't raised in this country. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like didn't know his father like that. You know, like it's he was raised by um the the jazz musician. You know, mm -hmm. that said he was going to groom him to be a jazz player. Like, and then he kind of just like dropped up off of that. Like I don't. Biggie's story is no no sugarcoating. No. Nothing was easy. Nothing was ever simple. Nothing was ever beautiful. You know, it was never pretty. And it, it honestly, like, it personifies, like, one of my favorite, like, just themes and, and just, like, ideas of life that is, like, why was he able to enjoy the journey? Because he was ready to die. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way that you're ever able to truly enjoy everything that you're going through is when you're not working towards some ends, but you're at peace. You know what I mean? And that's what I see in him. That's what I get in the music. And it's it's just such when did for he me find a the freeing piece? way to freeing way to live. When did he find the peace? It seemed like he seemed like he well, okay, I shouldn't say he had peace. Because I don't know if he had peace. Well I think he had peace. I think he had peace. I think he I think he's always had peace. After the album, I think. Really? After he fully I think after he fully I think that that moment in North Carolina. Yeah. When he said, I'm with you, I'm doing this music thing and he stopped trying to split his life and being like, Oh, if this don't work out, I got this when you eliminate, hey, have a backup plan, do you to each his own. Everything that we're saying is we're talking about one of the biggest rappers ever. He could be an exception to the rule, blah blah blah. But for him, once he eliminated that plan B, mm -hmm. and it was, All right, this is what I'm doing, all my energy's going here, I'm focusing on this. I think that's when he found the peace. Because even if it's not, it was it was him. Mm -hmm. He had something he could fully invest in, something he could fully believe in. You know? Yeah. I rock with it, bro. It was it was a great experience, honestly. Yeah, it was. It was a really good dog. I wish it was longer. Like I, I it was. Too and it short. was it was it was like almost two hours, but I still wish it was longer. It was a but it felt abrupt. Like I wanted to know more. I wanted the after story a little bit. They yeah. Kind of stopped at his death. I need more. I need but also, more. hey, I like that they didn't go into his death. There's been so many document documentaries and series on these unsolved murders of Tupac and Biggie. You know, so I like that they said this is about Biggie, about his life. This is not about. This is not a crime doc. Yeah. yeah. Not another crime doc. And you it know? shouldn't be. And it shouldn't have been. But dang, that scene in New York, bro. Which one? When, after his death, bro. When everyone is just like. Oh, that was yeah. Oh, that, that was beautiful. Okay. And I just got chills again. That's another thing about Biggie, bro. And like that's what. Album was called Ready to Die. 
like all that, like all this persona around him. But then at the fucking like funeral, like when his like uh, body's being driven through the streets in New York, or whatever, like everyone is just singing his songs, happy, mm-hmm. lit, because they and why he was such a good king in New York is I don't think I love Hove, mm-hmm. but Hove's a mogul now and he talks like it, mm-hmm. he moves like it. Biggie at that time was unfiltered New York. Mm-hmm. The people could get behind it because they're like, damn, life's a bitch, but I'm here. That's why, not, that's the epitome of why Illmatic is crazy. Because mm-hmm. he said, life's, that's realness that New York loves. Yeah. That's what New York is. Yeah. New York, the East Coast, it's cold out there for a reason. Life's a it's bitch tough. and you like, die. It's not this it's not this beautiful West Coast sunny stuff that we experience. I love that. Yeah. But it's a different lifestyle, bro. Like, they're hardened and that stuff speaks. While we may be like, oh, he was sad, you know, blah, blah. I think to them, it's like, he's one of us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And he got through. He puts his pants on the same way we do. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and you can either, you can either, you know, take the hove hustle. But I feel like a lot of people think that might be a little bit of not necessarily the full truth Mm -hmm. you know it is or you could just get that unfiltered realness which is where you know it's able to exist you know where where you can just fucking ah yeah no yeah biggie is biggie's that guy bro my favorite song off the off the album is for sure the title track bro yeah ready to die speaks to me bro it used to be suicidal thoughts for sure Mm -hmm. (laughs) we do have to touch on puff man Real oh, yeah, quick. oh, yeah. Puff, so what you think about Puff? I want to get your opinions on Puff. And did this change anything? Did this give you some... I've always thought he was goofy. I've always thought he was a real goofy. Okay. But I thought the music was genius. Mm-hmm. You know, the sample flipping is genius. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he's did he a great producer. Did he produce it, though? Uh, I, I think he conceptualized it. I don't think he actually produced it. Okay. Did he produce it? No. No, I didn't think so. No, I know he didn't. It but, was um, Easy Modi. On which song? Which song? Did Ready to Die, the majority of it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm talking about Mo Money More Problems specifically. Oh, okay. From Life After Death, because I know there's, you know, when he was talking about that sample in the club, you're not in the club. Uh, I've been always really torn on on, on Puff. Mm -hmm. Like, I told you, I used to always think he was was behind Biggie's murder. That was kind of my theory that I I ran with. Uh, And so that obviously cast him in a poor light to me. And I've just really been... I, like, my whole life, I've definitely embraced, like, the West Coast thing. You know what I mean? And it's not like that beef's still alive, but when learning about it, when reading about it, I always kind of shined, you know, that uh, uh, protagonist light on the West Coast, you know? Yeah. And, and and so as Diddy was one of the more outspoken people on New York, even though it wasn't always hostile, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was outspoken and he was saying some shit. I've never loved him mm-hmm. this dog didn't really change a lot because i felt like he was saying good things but i don't know how authentic they always felt when he's sitting there you know with his fucking shirt all buttoned up like he i don't in know his bro fat mansion is still fat alive mansion alive yeah hey what do I, you think what you you break it down i have an interesting opinion on because i don't know that much about him yeah you know what i mean i i'd like to know more about him and that's why i'm very interested in this story i just have a lot of i'm you know, i'm ask my questions mm-hmm. I, do, I question everything where did this guy get money from yeah where did he get studio time from yeah why was why did he have the means to offer this to biggie but is this not like the biggest thing that he's ever done no it is and it was his start exactly that's yeah so what did he do before that and like obviously you know there's a thousand articles on how he did this, blah, 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 his come up, he was a real hustler, you know, just a money-making dude, you know, mm-hmm. from Harlem. And I respect that, and I root for the guy, bro, you know, love to see young black billionaires, bro, shoot, mm-hmm. running the game. Mm-hmm. But it just doesn't feel genuine all the time yeah. with him for me. And I just want to know more about, like, how he did this, bro. Like, why hasn't he done it since? Mm-hmm. Why wasn't he able to recreate that magic? Mm-hmm. Did Biggie really fuck with him enough so that maybe he couldn't do it again? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it just seems like if he was as good as everyone says he was, I would have heard something after Biggie that he a and r this closely, which I didn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Suge... No, man. He just got... He just was graced with the goat. And you know Suge, what I mean? Suge said it best, though. Like I, I thought, like... Because Diddy tried to make himself a part of it, you know? Yeah. Diddy, Diddy's That's... like, y'all gonna know I was here. That's where it's kind of goofy for me. That's where I've always got the goofy energy. Is like, why do you need to be on camera? It's Jerry Krause vibes a little bit for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. 
But I'm not hating. I'm just, I am just don't want it to come off as hate. I want it to come off as uh, someone asking questions, wondering. Because yeah. I don't think he's answered them. And I think that's more troubling to me because I know he has enough money at this point to cover it. He can make any answer he wants now. Yeah. So I want to know the truth before he... You yeah. know, I want to know everything, all the details, the rah rah. Because you was, I don't believe the whole setup stuff, but you was talking some. Uh, it, it's not far fetched, right? I right? Will say, right? I will say. Right? Because we don't got to get into it right now, but it's the best thing that a rapper can do for their sales and for their all legacy. Right, all right, all it right, is right, is to die, right, right, is right. to die. It's it's terrible. It's a terrible truth, but it is true. Don't listen to this guy, man. We're going to have that debate in another episode for sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll end on some positivity, though. You know? Mm. I definitely want to talk about this whole versus situation. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Because we're seeing, you know, just creators winning. Just artists winning. Mm-hmm. You know? More power to the people, bro. Timbaland and Swizz just sold uh, versus to Triller. And they're going to be splitting up the equity from, like, everything that they did with this deal with everyone who's performed on Versus since it started. All, like, 42, 43 of them, yeah. which is really sick. And that's just, like, that's definitely paying homage because you're like, all right, we built this platform because y'all believed in us, y'all rocked with mm-hmm. us when it wasn't that, you know? Y'all still came on, performed great, did the whole thing, you know? The Gucci Jeezy versus was a moment. A moment. That was a moment, bro. Like, that was fire. They created something amazing, and they're doing it the right way by realizing that it wasn't them. You know, it it was, but it wasn't. You Mm -hmm. know, like you said, it was these artists that people tuned in for, you know? Bro, and it's just like, the price is going up for Mm -hmm. good ideas. And when you create something that people can latch on to that... The public loves, gives people, especially in quarantine now, like, you need a reason to get up out of bed, get excited to go to the couch, you know, if you yep. can't, if we're not leaving the house, get excited to go from the bed to the couch downstairs, you know, Swear to God. like, and that, that content, that creativity and really monetizing, getting, spreading the wealth and just creating opportunities for others out of it. That's just such a great thing, you know? And it's such a good concept that I'm so excited it's getting more funding mm-hmm. and it's going to definitely be around longer, uh, you know? Uh, I think the Ghostface one just got announced. What? Like Ghostface Raekwon, I want to say. What? Like, yeah. Like, I'm like, what? I'm like 46. Now I got to do my research. What? Um, I'm like 42% sure. Wu-Tang versus? Yo. Ghostface versus... One second. Oh, yeah. Yeah, confirmed. Ghostface, yeah, Ghostface versus Waycron. Yo. Oh, okay. Now nah, we big up in versus. We can get into the positive talk. I'm mad at versus. Fuck versus for doing D'Angelo wrong. What they do? That shit's ugly as hell. They did like D'Angelo and friends versus. They didn't even get that man a proper matchup because they knew anyone would have been killed. But like, they didn't even. That wasn't even the thing. Who they match it up? Yeah, because I never it heard was, anything yeah, after that. There was nothing about it. It was just like D'Angelo did a performance basically. Oh wow, like, that's soft. I was sick, bro. That's soft. I was sick, bro. Someone call like, Chris Brown and at least make him try. That would have been over with. I, been, I agree. Like, I know. Ooh, I know. That would be really close, actually. I don't know. Chris, Chris Brown, Brown versus Usher needs to happen. Chris Brown versus Usher would be fire. Or Chris Brown versus Frank Ocean and they just fight in a boxing ring. <laughs> that would be really cool too but <laughs> we, we know how that ends yeah. we know how that movie ends bro but yeah <laughs> I cannot put Frank Ocean out of hands bro that's such a wild thing huh like rappers with hands oh just I sing- like R&B singers have more hands than rappers I'm taking. I'm saying that 10 times over that's so funny bro these singing motherfuckers tell me I'm wrong Trey Songs has more hands than I'm trying to think Pusha T Guaranteed. Oh, you're wrong. Guaranteed. You're wrong. Then Pusha. Pusha's killing some... They're just... They're, they're killing people. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're getting the Glock out. Like, they're, they're shooting someone over fighting. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, back to the verses, you know. I think we're just going to get better matchups now from this point. Yeah, maybe. there's more money. It's a bigger platform. The more legit it's going to get better. Be when is it going to be on the TV? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see. When, I'm saying, Should I look? Should I look? I think that's going to be a thing. I'm, I'm just saying. I don't know. I oh, just, oh, oh, on TV. Uh, yeah. Soon, bro. Tra- soon. Because I can't well, be watching on Instagram. I can't be watching on Instagram live. But, but I don't know. I think it's going to find a new home that's not TV. Because I think TV is dying. So, but it got sold to Triller. That's where the, uh, the Jake Paul, Nate Rob fight was. And that was on TV, right? Yeah. Yeah, you just got to do a little buy channel or that pay-per-view something type shit. Something smells good. Yeah, no. <laughs> tell me, I'm, I'm hungry, bro. I'm hungry. No, but no, it'll probably be on TV. It'll probably yeah, be on TV. Yeah, that's gonna be so pay per view. Cool. Yes, yeah. bro. It'll yeah. be fire, bro. Yeah. 
events like that, bro, just be like boxing matches, bro. That's gonna be like, uh, it's like a sporting. Almost. I would way rather watch that than a boxing match. Bro, have everyone uh, over, come throw for the fight, come throw for the versus battle, bro. Because it really does make music and sport have those parallel, bro. It makes the parallel so clear, bro. The yeah. excitement is so clear. Uh, uh, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. That was a great idea. Shout uh, out Timberland. Shout yes out Swiss. sir, man. Just yeah. redistributing the wealth. Of course. I think that's all I got. I think that's gonna do it. What yeah. you been slapping, Spencer? Like, what? Well, like, what's like a what's a song, a sleeper pick? Uh, that I've been slapping lately. Put, put the people on one thing, bro. Let me, let me, let me peep what I've been listening to. Hold on. I hit y'all with "Till Next Time, Love" by Larry June. Oh yeah, that's his best. Song. Oh my God, look at. Okay, I found a crazy Larry June song last night. Shout out Luke. Luke sent me this. Look, it was a little rebrand of uh, the Outrunners. You know, I hadn't even seen this, but it's Currency, Harry Fraud, and Larry June on this song, Vintage Haze. The director's cut, a bunch of new shit from Currency and Harry Fraud after the Outrunners. Crazy shit. Yo, almost done, almost done. Give us two minutes. Yeah, but I'm going to have to tap into that, the fuck? No, yeah, that's really good. Uh, And then I've been listening, I told you my Pharrell thing. If I had to pick one, like, song from the Pharrell phase, it would be Hello New World. Off Hell Hot No Fury. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Hey, Mama, I'm so sorry. It might be my favorite. Or we got it for t- oh, the first two songs are ridiculous. The first two songs set the tone. We oh, got it for cheap intros. Insane. Oh, we can't get it. Thank y'all for rocking with us, man. Yeah. Make sure to do all the YouTube stuff. We say it every time. Like, share, subscribe, subscribe, all comment, that shit. All, all that, that shit. man. All that shit. All that let shit. Let your friends know. Let your mom know. Let your auntie know. Tell them to rock with us, man. Rock with a vision. New things coming soon. We'll catch y'all next time, man. Peace. Later. All that shit, all that shit.